Hey everyone, are you all ready for Sunday night live? Uh, this is cool, it's great to be with everybody. Um, lots going on, lots to talk about. Looking forward to uh, going over your questions with you, taking those in just a few minutes too. But we're going to be looking at the book of Micah. We're going to pick up where we left off sometime back in December uh, with this message from Micah chapter 4. Is this really going to happen to Israel? Is what really going to happen to Israel? Well, there's a few different things that according to the Bible are going to happen to Israel. I was asked just the other day why I believe such things as the things that we talk about because the Bible says it. Uh, therefore, I believe it. Uh, but lots to talk about. Let's just consider a few things before we even get to Micah chapter 4. Uh, here is uh, just one of the things to, to uh, consider. Well, check this out. Um, this says, multiple conspiracy theories came true in 2022. In reviewing the top stories of 2022, political commentator Kim Iverson observed that many people were labeled conspiracy theorists simply for saying something that went against the establishment liberal orthodoxy, not because it was quackery rooted in falsehood. Iverson continued, the reality is so many that they, the mainstream media, claim to be conspiracy theories are actually true. Anytime someone's labeled as a conspiracy theorist, it might just mean it's time to actually investigate and look a little deeper into whatever it is they are claiming because so often nowadays conspiracy theorists are not conspiracy theorists at all. They are truth tellers, fact tellers, researchers, and they're connecting the dots and getting a lot of things right. I say right on. So true. Uh, as John Haller said just the other day, he said, uh, he said, it's not conspiracy theories. They're, they're now spoiler alerts. It's telling people, hey, this is what they're doing and this is the direction things are going to go. Um, you might want to uh, be concerned about what you see taking place. All right, uh, let's move on. Check out this one. Globalists want to want harsher censorship of conspiracy theories. Police in Queensland, Australia have ordered citizens to report neighbors who are anti-government or believe, I, I can't say the next thing. Uh, guess what? By the way, if you haven't been over on the app over the last week, we were over there all week long because I was not allowed on this channel. So I'll just say that for y'all. Um, so just keep that in mind, all right? But, uh, but there's some things I can't say because, you know, you guys know why. Um, and before I go any further, there are some things I need to tell you all tonight. So a little bit later on, uh, we'll be going to uh, the app only. Uh, but for right now, the, with what I'm going to say now and then uh, uh, into Micah, it'll be, it'll be posted everywhere. This is all live. It's on uh, YouTube and everything. But there are some things I really do need to share with you all so you all are very well aware of what is uh, going on. In fact, the rest of that article I can't read. I uh, can't read here. Okay, let's see what this one here says. Hmm. Here it is. Oh, abortion was the leading cause of death in 2022. Over 44 million unborn babies were murdered via abortion in 2022. According to Worldometer statistics, accounting for roughly 40% of all deaths. Wow. The leading cause of death in 2022 is murder of babies. Check this one out. You ready for this one? Virgin Islands Attorney General fired after filing Epstein lawsuit. It's like, okay, interesting. Denise George, the Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands, was fired just days after she filed a lawsuit accusing J.P. Morgan Chase of turning a blind eye to pedophile Jeffrey Epstein's crimes. The lawsuit accused the bank of knowingly providing and pulling the levers through which recruiters and victims were paid. Joe Biden just happened to be visiting the Virgin Islands during the same time that George was fired. Gee, what a quinky dink, huh? Uh, so listen, let's not stop there. There's a few more things just to bring to our attention. Damon Duck writes, one of my favorites to quote, he writes, many Bible prophecy teachers know that the end of the age will be characterized by an unprecedented convergence of the signs, unprecedented increase in knowledge and travel, 
unprecedented increase in deceit and pestilence, unprecedented call for global government, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then he quotes uh, Jim Markell, who was talking about a Pew Research uh, report. And she says they found that U.S. adults, 30, out of U.S. adults, 39% say the end times are now. That includes 40, 47% of all Christians, which in turn included 55% of Protestants, 63 evangelicals, 31 of mainline church members, 76% of historically black church membership. So uh, the number uh, one and two categories are the uh, black church membership, same we are in the last days, and evangelicals comes in the second place, 63%. Very interesting to say the least. And you guys know what I believe. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Uh, Markel made it clear that the poll was about the second coming and not about the rapture. Duck said if the poll is right, and I don't have a reason to doubt it, the number of Christians that believe the end of the age is here and, gr and is growing and unprecedented. And then he said this, everyone needs to be rapture ready. And then uh, uh, there's more things to confirm it. Concerning, and I can't say this word here, the decline of America, Catherine Austin Fitz publisher of the Solari Report and former U.S. Secretary of Housing under Bush 41, made some interesting statements in an interview posted by Greg Hunter on December 20. Hunter reported that Fitz said, and then he says in my words for the sake of brevity, the U.S. is so fraudulent that it will self-destruct much sooner than later. Then, he said, there is a machine that is in control of a spending machine that is financed with our taxes and debt that is borrowed in our name. What is the machine she is referring to? I don't know. Uh, Duck uh, doesn't say he knows, but he's guessing the machine that Catherine Austin Fitz is referring to is uh, the deep state or the shadow government. So you have the machine controlling the spending machine. Yeah, the same machine, deep state or shadow government or whatever it is. The same machine is implementing this particular plan to balance the books and changing the president will not go, uh, will not change, changing the president will not change what the machine is doing. In other words, no matter what we do, politics or anything else, this machine, deep state, shadow government, whatever, is going this direction and you ain't stopping it. Guess what? Jesus is going to stop it. Jesus is going to come back. Uh, these people who are running this machine think with their antichrist and their fake religion that's coming during the tribulation period, uh, they're going to build their utopian world. It's not going to last very long at all. Jesus is coming back. According to Daniel, he's ab absolutely going to crush it. If the machine does not fail you in 2023, it will fail you in 2024. In other words, it's coming, and you better look out. Uh, it also states a particular thing is a bioweapon and it's part of the machine's plan. I won't be able to talk about this here. I will be able to talk about it later though. So I'll save that one uh, for a bit later. Okay, uh, concerning the days of Lot and immorality, the Knesset and Netanyahu's government elected an openly gay man to be the speaker of the Knesset, the first openly gay person to hold that position in Israel. Now let me stop here for just a second because that's in Jerusalem where the Knesset meets. Um, for those of you who have been to Israel or you understand the dynamics, even if you haven't been there, you, you, you really, but you, you pay attention to things, uh, you are probably well aware that Tel Aviv, not Jerusalem, but Tel Aviv is, I believe it is now known as like the LGBTQ capital of the world. Uh, they have this massive parade for Pride Month every June. Um, huge, right? So you have that in Tel Aviv. Now Tel Aviv is very secular. Jerusalem is very religious, very conservative. However, you have this entered into the Knesset, just like you'd have these things in the United States. And you see this kind of thing taking over. Now this is also interesting because in Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, God calls Jerusalem at the midpoint of the tribulation. He calls Jerusalem. The reason we know it's Jerusalem is the great city. And it says it's the city where our Lord was crucified. So we know that the Bible's talking about Jerusalem and he calls Jerusalem during the tribulation period, he calls it Sodom and Egypt. Very interesting. You see this, these things develop. Concerning Netanyahu's new government, 
uh, the, and the Temple Mount on January 3, that'd be just the other day, uh, with the approval of uh, Netanyahu, Ben Gvir, his new national security minister, became the first city minister to ascend the Temple Mount in five years. During his visit, he said the Temple Mount is open for everyone, also Jews. The Palestinian Authority condemned the visit, but many Jews praised it. Now, all kinds of heat has started over what Ben Gavir did walking on the Temple Mount. For those of you who were with us on our last trip to Israel uh, back in just uh, November, you'll remember we were up on the Temple Mount and you just had a couple of guys, a couple of uh, Haredi that were up on the Temple Mount and they were barefoot, they were walking around because they look at that as being holy ground because that's where the Temple was. And they had a lot of security around them, Israeli police and so forth all around them. Um, and it, it was a real big deal. And for those of you who are w w with me, we being together, we could observe the whole thing. It was very peaceful. They didn't do anything. They just walked around very quiet, um, really. And that was about it. But man, it was such a big deal politically. Well, what Ben Gavir did is even a bigger deal politically. Jordan said he stormed the temple, uh, the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. You know, that is just absolutely ridiculous. With Ben Gavir going up on the Temple Mount, you have uh, the PA, you have Jordan, you have all these other Islamic groups that are, and people groups too, that are coming against Israel over what Ben Gavir did. Storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque is absolutely ridiculous. He is by himself, has security, they're not going to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Why would he go into the Al-Aqsa Mosque and defile himself? You know, it doesn't make any sense. It would be like uh, somebody that's Islamic, that's radically Islamic, and going into a, uh, a, a synagogue. Well, why would they do that? You know, you look, you go, no. Ben Gavir did not go into the Al-Aqsa Mosque. But uh, it's the way things are spun. Uh, and if you understand the layout of the Temple Mount, the Temple Mount is huge, huge. I forget how many acres. I'm thinking in my mind like 36, 37 acres, something like that. Some, I'm not sure. Some of you will fact check and you can figure it out and send me the notes so I can read it, but it's something like that. It's big. Well, the Al-Aqsa Mosque just makes up a small portion of the southern side of the, the um, Temple Mount. So when he went up on the Temple Mount, they just said he, he stormed the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Absolutely ridiculous. He went up there uh, peacefully. Um, concerning the World Economic Forum, uh, they will begin their series of meetings on January 18th. Uh, it's coming up. I've been talking about this. Just did my midweek uh, update about this. Five things they're going to be talking about. Um, and here, as Duck says, uh, they're going to be um, focusing on countering misinformation. I don't even think I dealt with that in my update the other day. But countering misinformation, what do you think that means? It means you bring the truth. You know, we opened up with that story about um, conspiracy theorists are actually now all being proven right. You know, you look at this misinformation. In other words, anything that these globalist leaders don't want. Um, Duck wrote, it is time to face the fact that world leaders are deliberately transitioning, taking incremental steps. Uh, they're deliberately transitioning the nations toward a world government, hence the New World Order, the Great Reset, by 2030 or sooner. We've seen this. The whole UN Agenda 2030, that's what it is. And it includes climate laws and several other things. Uh, and then he went on and said, and pre-trib rapture teachers believe the rapture is before the tribulation period. Those that are left behind will regret it. And he says here, are you rapture ready? Are you ready? If the Lord were to call us home now, are, are you someone... Uh, that would be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So good things to think about. And right now we're going to get into Micah chapter 4, pick up where we left off last time. Uh, last time we were in chapter 3, a little bit of chapter 4. But in chapter 3, Micah was writing, it's the word of the Lord, and God calls out. He calls out the fake priests, he calls out the fake prophets who gave a fake promise of peace in the land. Uh, the whole thing was... Fake, and they said everything's going to be okay. But God said in Micah chapter 3, the last few verses, he said, um, Now hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel who abhor justice and pervert all equity. 
In other words, you say it's all about equity, but it's actually not. Well, basically what we see going on with politicians today, the liars that they are, uh, who build up Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with iniquity. Her heads judge for a bribe. Her priests teach for pay. So it's, it, it comes down to money. You, you bribe the judges. The priests are supposed to be teaching the truth. You can bribe the priest, just give them a little bit of money. They'll say whatever you want to hear if you give them enough money. Huh. Imagine that. And her prophets divine for money. The prophets, the priests, the judges, all the same stuff. In other words, well, I'll tell you, you, you get a feel for what the people want to hear and what the government wants the people to believe. Judgment's not coming. You don't need to believe in all that stuff. And uh, you pay these people to, to go and tell, who, 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 to become the spokespersons. So you look at now what happens in the media throughout the world, they have their spokespersons. They're going to get paid X amount of dollars to go with the narrative. Uh, when you think of that too, um, you also think of, uh, when you start going with the, the, the narrative, it's not just the media personalities, it's happening in churches. Uh, at the same time, where you have pastors who are just going along with the whole thing. So that's, that really, if you were to take Micah chapter 3 back then, but then put it in today's understanding, that's how it fits. Huh. And then they lie, and they say they lean on the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? No harm can come upon us. So all of these lies, in other words, we follow the Lord. Well, it's like a... It's, it's like a um, Matthew chapter 7. Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name and that name? Oh, we're such a follower of yours. No, you were liars. Depart from me, I never knew you. So, so that was back then at the time of Micah. Um, Micah was a prophet, contemporary of the prophet Isaiah. So think 730 BC. Uh, then you fast forward to today and you can see how easily this fits. All right, so the, the first thing that we see, and we're only going to spend a minute here, is Israel in glory, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, after God calls out the false prophets and the false priests and the judges who take bribes, the politicians and so forth. We see Israel in glory. We looked at this last time, so I'm not going to get into too many details about this right now. But uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, is about the restoration of Israel. Chapter 4, verse 1 it shall come to pass in the latter days. So just because it says that, we were able to put it into a category of where we are right now. And the reason why we can know this, we don't know the exact timing or anything, but we know this because we see the prophecies starting to come together all at this time. They're all converging. They're not fulfilled yet, but they're converging. So we can go, okay, this categorizes right here in the latter times. Now, if you believe that the Bible is true, this is going to make sense to you. Uh, there are many people who just say, "This no, come on. But, but if, I, I actually believe the word of the Lord. The prophetic things uh, that are coming in the future and all of the rest of the Bible, I believe it all. So here, in the latter days, this is what's going to happen. The mountain of the house of the, Lord, of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above all of the hills and people shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. We shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion, the law shall go forth and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And then goes on and he talks about <coughs> the Lord's going to be judging there. So this launches us into the millennial kingdom is when this is going to be fulfilled. But we started to see the return of the Jews back in 1948. May 14, 1948 is the official day, um, but uh, the return of the Jews has been happening uh, for a long time. You think of Theodore Herzl back in the 1800s, uh, and, and then you think of Ben Yehuda, the restoration of the, of the Hebrew language. So you start looking at this. This has been happening. It's like this slow motion fulfillment, but it is being fulfilled. So we can see it coming together, and then the Lord is going to judge from the mountains of Israel. His house is going to be there. He's going to be ruling and reigning. Uh, the temple's going to be there in Jerusalem for the Messiah, Jesus, when he returns. Uh, he will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem, and it is going to be awesome. Uh, Psalm 107, 
Verses 2 through 3 say, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Hey, can you guys move this slide over? And gathered uh, out of the land from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. So this is just a prophecy from the east and the west and the north and the south. The Lord is going to be bringing his people from all over the world. He's going to gather them. The regathering has already begun. The ultimate fulfillment will be during the millennial kingdom, and I believe it's just around the corner. Okay, with that, let's move on to number two. I have three main points today. Uh, number two, number one, Israel in glory. Number two, we find Israel in misery. We didn't look at any of this yet. Chapter four of Micah, after we've already had the prophecy, okay, it's going to be good news, the millennial kingdom, the Messiah is coming, it's going to be great news, it's going to be totally awesome, absolutely incredible, but before the millennial kingdom, there's going to be some trials and tribulations for Israel. Uh, chapter four, uh, 4, verse 9 says, Micah writing, now why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in your midst? Has your counselor perished? For pangs have seized you like a woman in labor. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in birth pangs. For now you shall go forth from the city. You shall dwell in the field, and to Babylon you shall go. But there you shall be delivered. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Interesting. You look at this. You go, okay. Talking about... This is, uh, in the immediate context, tells us here it's Babylon. So remember, Micah prophesying about the same time as, uh, he was a contemporary of Isaiah. So to the northern kingdom Israel, but he also spoke to the southern kingdom of Judah. And he's letting him know, to Judah, you are going to go and you're going to be taken captive uh, by the Babylonians. The official date is 586 uh, BC when that was fulfilled. And he lets him know it's going to be painful. So he says, why do you cry aloud, verse 9? Is there no king in your midst? Uh, the people were full of idolatry, that's what he's dealing with, and full of sin, and God dealt with their sin. Then after the 70 years of captivity, what happens? Um, God releases them, fulfills the prophet, uh, the, the words of the prophet um, of Jeremiah. So Israel's released, they're able to go back home, and they did go back home. And then, check this out, in verse 11, Micah then projects into yet the future. Now also many nations have gathered against you who say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. Okay, so what's going on here? Uh, this is referring to another time of the misery of Israel that's still coming in the future. It's the time that Zechariah writes about this same thing when all the nations will be gathered against, uh, against, um, uh, against Israel. Uh, where Zechariah writes about this, I'll just read a few verses here. But Zechariah says, The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the hands, uh, out the heavens, lays the foundations of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against her, against Jeru Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all the nations of the earth are gathered against Israel, against Judah. So let's work through a couple of things. As we look at Micah's prophecy, he's prophesying at that point, verse 11, into the future. Um, the, you have the Babylonian captivity, that happened. Israel went back, they were gathered back into the land, but then he projects into the future in verse 11, what, I, what uh, Zechariah just wrote about. Okay, what is very concerning is anti-Semitism, and I'm going to get into just a couple of things here. Um, Olivier Melnick, my good friend, he has his website, The New Anti-Semitism. I encourage you to go check it out. He updates people what's going on with the attacks that are against the Jews. I'll have him coming up on the program uh, uh, soon enough. By the way, tomorrow on, 
uh, the live cast is going to be uh, Dr. Andy Woods will be joining me at 2 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to be a great time. Uh, Andy's always challenges everybody. But when it comes to anti-Semitism, uh, Olivier Melnick is just uh, so spot on. I encourage you to go check that out because we're seeing the attacks against Israel increase and increase and increase. I'm going to show you a couple of things that lead me to believe it's about ready to get much worse. Check this one out. This is out of the Times of Israel. Blinken, Biden's man, right, um, tells Israel's new foreign minister, the U.S. will oppose steps that undermine two-state solution. In other words, and look at what it says underneath that. In first call with Ellie Cohen, uh, secretary also discusses American commitment to Israel's security, Abraham Accords, and Iran nuclear threat. Okay, so what's Blinken's, what, what, what's really the Biden administration saying? The, the land is going to be divided. What does Joel say about that, the prophet Joel? The prophet Joel says anybody who divides the land, who seeks to divide the land, anybody who divides the land is going to be judged. Any nation that comes against my people, Israel, and divides the land, they will be judged. In fact, let me read it to you. Make sure I get it exactly right here. It's Joel uh, chapter uh, 3. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. Uh, so again, we look at this coming out of the times of Israel. We know this is what's going on. So what's coming from the Biden administration is, look, Netanyahu, you have this government. You're, you're too far right. You're you're too religious and so forth. Um, this better not affect, uh, affect the dividing of Jerusalem because it is going to be divided. Look, I look, look at this and I think, man, America is in so much trouble. This is poking God in the eye. Uh, Jerusalem is the apple of God's eye. And regardless of what you might think about uh, Israel or whatever's going on over there, listen, I, I base my thoughts on what the Bible teaches. And the Bible does teach that God made a covenant with Abraham, and this covenant is a forever covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God gave him the land. Now, no man has the right to divide the land of Jerusalem. No man has the right to divide up the land of Israel. God gave him the land. And you want to know what? Israel has never possessed all of their land. The most they've ever possessed in the land that God gave them was back at the time of Solomon. Still didn't possess all the land God gave them. Guess what's going to happen? They are going to possess that land, and God will judge every nation that comes against Israel and divides up the land. He tells us he's going to do it. So this is really rather disturbing, I would say, for the United States of America. Then we have this. Check out this one. Uh, this is just from today. Smotrich implements sanctions on PA, transfers millions um, to terror victims. So what's going on here? Uh, it was Bill Salas who sent me this just uh, earlier today. And I said, wow, notice the comment. That's Bill's comment you see in the bottom. Uh, here we go. Hold on to your hat. I want you to think about what's going on here. He's saying, guess what? Um, the, the millions of dollars that uh, Israel would have used the money for something else, the millions of dollars isn't going to the PA. It's going to the victims of the terrorists. This will get everybody upset, including the Biden administration. Imagine that. You know, you have these Jews over there that are terror victims. Their families uh, know that money goes to the terrorist families, not the, the, the victims of the terrorism. And, um, and imagine this coming along and saying, uh, people coming along and saying, this is wrong that Israel will give the money to their own victims. No, it's the right thing to do. This is what the article says. Uh, Finance Minister Bezalel, Bezalel uh, Smotrich uh, will today, it would be Sunday, sign the order to implement one of the measures the cabinet decided on last week to retaliate against the Palestinian Authority for seeking to bring Israel before the International Criminal Court in The Hague. The move will transfer approximately 139 million shekels from funds for the Palestinian Authority to Israeli victims of terrorism implementing the Lit Litvak verdict. The cabinet also decided to immediately offset the payments made by the PA 
to terrorists and their families in 2022, according to the report of the defense establishment. And then it goes on and tells more about it from there. You look at this and you go, Bill's right, hold on to your hats. We, the anti-Semitism is increasing, but the way these things are spun, like I mentioned earlier, from Jordan with Ben Gavir going up on the Temple Mount peacefully um, and accused of storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque, it's ridiculous. But all of these things get spun. Listen, before we go to the last thing, I want to bring up this. This is from End Time Headline. I love that, uh, I love that site. It's really cool. Um, they did such a good job. This is a reminder for where we are in life and what we always need to remember. This is what he says. Look at this. Lukewarm, it's time to pick your side now, Jesus or the world. Backsliders, it's time to repent and come back home. Unbelievers, it's time to repent and surrender your lives to God. Believers, stay encouraged. Keep the faith. Our redemption draws near. Amen. Again, Luke, if you're lukewarm, dude, wake up. You know, Jesus says, remember in Revelation chapter 13, you're lukewarm, I'll, I'll, I'll barf you out of my mouth. Backsliders, look, get your, get, get your life right with the Lord. Unbelievers, listen, Jesus is coming back. The Bible prophecies are evidence that the Bible is true. Okay, last thing. So number one, Israel in glory. Number two, Israel in uh, misery. Uh, number three, it is Israel in victory. So back in Micah, uh, let me get back to Micah. I forgot to leave my page open there. Uh, back in Micah, Micah chapter four, just a few verses here, uh, verses 12 and 13, last two verses of Micah. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. So this is when uh, they say, ver verse 11, now also many nations have gathered against Israel who say, let her be defiled. Let your eye look upon Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand his counsel. For he will gather them like sheaves to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. For I will make your horn iron. I will make your hooves bronze. You shall beat in pieces many peoples. I will consecrate their grain to the Lord and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. This is talking about Israel's great victory. Israel's great victory at the point of the beginning of the second half of the tribulation when uh, Antichrist sits in the temple and claims that he is God. He begins his murderous holocaust of the Jews and uh, he, he starts to go after them to, uh, to go on his, his slaughtering. Uh, to, he wants to destroy them all, right? Uh, that's his goal. Uh, let me eliminate all of the Jews from the land. Uh, but the Bible tells us this is how it works uh, in Revelation chapter 12, beginning in verse 13. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, that would be Israel and the Jews, who gave birth to the male child, uh, that would be Jesus. Um, got some of my notes in here, by the way. Uh, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So what is, what's going on here? So this is what I believe. Uh, when you put these things together, I believe what takes place at the midpoint of the tribulation period, Antichrist seeks to destroy the nation of Israel. It's the nation of Israel that gave birth to Jesus um, and the Messiah. Uh, we know from Revelation chapter 12 that the dragon, that would be Satan, he gets kicked out of heaven. He knows his time is short. And at that point, he turns his attention to, to destroy the Jews, to, to slaughter them. Uh, interesting. Uh, Zechariah chapter 13 tells us this. Verse 8. It shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds in it shall be cut off and die. Uh, but one-third shall be left in it. So two-thirds of Israel, two-thirds of Israel will be cut off and die. There's going to be a great slaughter that's coming against the people of Israel. Listen, this is not something I have any... I, it's awful. I mean, when you start thinking of the judgments of the last days and the tribulation, it's awful what is coming upon the planet. Of going over into the land of Israel and seeing, you know, you see the children playing there in the streets and... Uh, you see all these different people, some very, a lot of very young people. 
and you start thinking, okay, if the rapture happens soon and all of these last days events develop here just over the next few years, you think these little kids I'm seeing are going to be caught up in, in what we are reading about. It, it is absolutely heartbreaking and devastating to think that. Friends, I want to ask you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I know that means we are praying for Jesus to return because that's exactly what we need to do. But uh, I, I look at this and I think, okay, anti-Semitism is increasing. The pressure against Israel is increasing. The, the threat to, the, the pressure to divide the land is increasing. Um, all of these things developing at the same time. And so it's, it's, it's a somewhat heartbreaking to me when, when you see these kids and you see these young families. And for the most part, unless they're messianic, they don't, not wanting to know Jesus, that's the predominant thought over there in Israel as much as here in America. But will you pray for people over there in Israel? Because what's coming, according to what the Bible says, is really a horrible thing. I, I remember sitting in Jerusalem <coughs> several years ago. I was at a cafe with someone. I won't mention their name, um, but he's pretty well known. And um, he said that there's a problem. He goes, I have a problem with you prophecy people. And and uh, he said, sometimes, he goes, you know what's going to happen to my people? And we were talking, he, he brought it up, I didn't bring it, and he brought up this. And I said, yes, and I said, listen, I don't say this with any joy, but with, with warning, and I do know what's going to happen, but I can't, stop, I can't stop the warnings, and I can't stop telling people and, and, and letting them know. And listen, there's believers over, a lot of believers over in Israel, pray for them because the heat is being turned up against the Messianic Jews over in, in Israel. I'll, I'll, I'm going to do something on that here real quick with one of my Israeli friends, uh, probably next week. Um, but it, it's, you know, you look at it, there's a lot of people that view uh, the program here from Israel. Um, they could use your prayer. So, so pray for them. But I look at this and go, man, Zechariah says two-thirds shall be cut off. But then God says this in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. I will bring the one-third through the fire. I will refine them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, this is my people. And each one will say, the Lord is my God. God says, I'm going to refine them. I'm going to bring them through the fire. Uh, when you read in Romans chapter 11, where it says, all Israel will be saved, this is what that's referring to. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9, uh, verses 8 and 9. That's what that is referencing to. Uh, but the Antichrist is going to seek to destroy Israel. But again, what does Revelation chapter 12 say? Let's go back. If we can pull this up on the screen one more time, this last slide. But the woman, that be Israel, was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. That'd be for three and a half years into the wilderness. Uh, where's that place that she goes? Well, I believe, and it's to, I believe it's probably these one third of Zechariah chapter 13 that are saved and brought away from Antichrist. Uh, remember the words of Jesus, when you see the abomination of desolation uh, in the holy place, flee from Judea, Flee from, if you're in the field, don't go back to get your, your coat. Don't do anything. Just flee. That's what he's referring to. So I believe that this place is Petra. Um, here's a picture that my friend Bob Probert took on a trip to uh, Israel and Petra. Uh, you see that. Uh, here's another picture. I'll show you a few pictures. Here's uh, another one. Welcome to Petra. Petra is in Jordan. Um, here's a couple more pictures for you guys um, uh, that I got from Bob. Uh, so there you have it, uh, uh, Petra, here's one with a camel, a few camels in it, you can also do a camel ride, um, and of course it's famous, it's really made famous because of, not because of the Bible, because a lot of people don't pay attention to the Bible, we do, but a lot of people don't, but really because of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, Harrison Ford, there it is, right there in Petra, uh, you can get this, my friend Bob took that picture too. Indiana Jones Snack Shop. So uh, there, you, there you go. Uh, but speaking about 
Petra. Um, when Jesus said flee, he said flee to the mountains, he did not name the mountains. Um, but I have several different reasons for why I believe it is this place called Petra. Uh, Damon Duck pointed this out on December 28. He got his information from uh, watchers.news. Uh, on December 28, it was reported that Petra was flooded by 3.1 inches of rain. Uh, the day after Christmas, 1,700 tourists were evacuated and it was closed for one day. Video posted by watchersnews.com shows flood shows flood water, a road, a vehicle, and people at Petra. And then he said this, I seem to remember that there's now a road to Petra and utilities to accommodate the many visitors if necessary. Then he says this, put another way, if that is the place, preparations, uh, the place that is spoken of in Revelation chapter 12, where flee to the wilderness, uh, where Jesus is talking in Matthew chapter 24, flee to the mountains, don't even go back to your house. Uh, also, there's another passage in the Old Testament, can't remember exactly what verse it is right now, it talks about the mountains. I believe it's speaking specifically of the mountains of Jordan and this place in Petra. And he says this about the, the utilities to accommodate visitors and so forth. He said, put another way, if that is the place, preparations have been made for lots of people. The Jews can get there, and if they need food and water, God can send it, and it will be need if the flood, uh, if the food, excuse me, is manna from heaven. That is totally cool, but God says, I prepared a place for you, and you start looking at this. Is this the place that was prepared so many centuries ago, uh, this rock city, and now with some utilities possibly, I don't know. Uh, but food, I can easily see. When you start thinking of the last days and you go back and you look at judgments and, and God delivering his people out of the land uh, of uh, the persecution of Antichrist, he delivers them to safety like he did from Pharaoh, delivering them uh, from the harms of Pharaoh, a type of Antichrist, into the wilderness back then. He gave them manna from heaven. Wouldn't surprise me at all for those Jews for that three and a half years, God's going to be raining down manna from heaven and maybe they're going to know exactly what that is. But God says, I prepared a place uh, for you. And um, so I think it's pretty cool. Okay, we have a little bit of a balagon and here is the balagon. I'm going to take your questions starting right now. Okay, so get ready. But this is, this is the scoop. Um, I'm gonna, I gotta deal with some things that is too sensitive. Uh, it's just too sensitive for YouTube, I'll put it that way. And I gotta explain some things to all y'all. So for the next uh, few minutes, we're gonna go, uh, uh, it'll be off of YouTube, it's gonna be everywhere else, we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna take your questions live. Uh, if you wanna send me your questions, there are a lot of people already in the chat, a lot of people are already on the app and on YouTube. But if you wanna come and join us, listen, it's free to download the app, it'll take you about 30 seconds, and if you want to join the chat, you just need to create an account. Um, it's all free, so, uh, and I would love to have you so I can start taking your questions, but that's what the app looks like. You can get on Apple, you can get on Droid. I think this is also on the website tonight. One quick announcement, we have our new website launching this week. I believe the launch date is Wednesday. I'm excited about it. All of the videos we do, all of the live streams, we actually have a place to host them now like we do on the app, so they aren't gonna go away. <coughs> so that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. You're gonna absolutely love it. So with the app, with the website, also I believe this is where we are. We're live on Roku right now. If you have a Roku device, if you pay for that, uh, you're, there's people on there watching too. So totally cool. So let's go over there because I, I wanna talk to you guys about some things. So ready? This might take about 10 seconds to do the switch, but uh, we're gonna roll. Looking forward to talking to, to y'all.